Ian, early on, um, you weren't sure if you would rise to the occasion. That would happen later. But you, you had to struggle with your height. You wanted to follow your dad's footsteps. You joined the Army Cadets at age 13 and very quickly outgrew your uniform. <laughs> yes, I could see that the writing was on the wall. I thought, what luck will I have as an adult if I can't even fit into the uniform as a child? At age 17, you were how tall? I was seven foot one when I was 17. Seven foot one. Obviously, that gets some stares, but it also brought about some bullying for you. I found school very uninspiring. Uh, it was an ordeal. As soon as it was over, I wanted to get out. But I had an opportunity to participate in an exchange program. I went to a high school in New Jersey for a year, and I met the most inspirational people, both students and teachers, people that were living lives that I'd only ever seen on, on television or in the movies. Well, when you're that tall, of course, one of the number one questions people ask you is like my friend Dikembe Mutombo, who was at college at Georgetown at seven foot two. And the coach says, why is there a seven foot two person on campus that I don't know? Because uh, he went there to, to eventually go to medical school. But when you're that tall, what's one of the first questions people ask you is, wow, do you play basketball? You got a chance to play basketball. Were you, you fit in. The basketball coach at the high school was very inspirational and had a uh, huge impact on my life. And that's why I got a chance to um, to go to college. How did that parlay itself into your first acting gig? I was playing for the team in Newcastle in the north of England. And one day I had a phone call from the secretary of the club and she said, listen, we've got a casting director on the phone. She's looking for somebody like you, tall, slim, athletic. Do you want to talk to her? And my first reaction was, well, nobody wants to put me in a film. I'm absolutely sure of that. And I, I thought it was a joke at first, so I said, please feel free to pass on my phone number. And uh, five minutes later, the phone rang and it was uh, it was a casting director for Alien vs. Predator. You know, you hear these stories all the time from actors saying, oh, I was in the right place at the right time, or the phone just rang. And that was it, the phone just rang. And to play those roles, you can't fake it. You could, but it makes it more problematic. Why not just be it? Uh, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. When we spoke earlier, you sounded so exhilarated. <laughs> yeah, I practically bookended my entire career in, within the first two films. Yeah, I was actually a stunt double on that movie. And the joyful thing was that I got to be there on set every single day. And I was playing a woman. Well, you, and you played it well. Okay. <laughs> Ridley Scott's Prometheus. Edomar, you got Guy Gars there. Again, that was one of those pinch me moments, you know. The first time I met Ridley Scott, it was a rainy Sunday afternoon at Pinewood Studios, and I didn't even have the job at that time. We'd done a few tests for the makeup designer, who was a good friend of mine, Conor O'Sullivan. We'd worked together on Game of Thrones, Clash of the Titans, and I still had to go through the, uh, the casting process. Ironically, the scene that I auditioned for the casting director in her studio was the only scene in the film that I didn't actually do. Intimidating, right? Game of Thrones, you mentioned that. A White Walker in seasons one and two, the giant Dongo the Doomed in season three and four, the giant One One in seasons five and six, two giant whites in season seven, and a giant white in season eight who ends up fighting Leanna Mormont. You didn't realize how popular that was, but you did know how popular Star Wars was, right? Yes, I can remember Star Wars from the first time. You've had so many other roles, Hercules, Brave New World. Uh, your approach to acting is what? Because a lot of people count themselves out when they forget that when you're casting for a particular character, you want that character to be as close in form and function as you can get. In terms of playing these uh, alien characters or non-human characters, the first thing I do is try to find something human, something recognizably human in them that I can articulate because, of course, I'm going to have to articulate it in a human way. Because you don't see them as monsters or beasts, and you're right, that's what makes us connect to them. Uh, that's what makes a whole new toy market too, right? <laughs> People connect to them. Uh, what are some of your upcoming projects you have going on? I am in the new Robert Eggers movie called Northman. We actually shot that at the height of the pandemic uh, in Belfast. It was the first production that was uh, shot under very, very strict COVID-19 protocols, but we got it done. And I have a TV show that I um, participated in due on Disney Plus sometime next year. 
Well, Ian, thanks for spending time with us. And I want to round out with, I think everybody at some point in their life feels like they don't fit in. Your best advice for someone who feels like they stick out and they think they have a problem with it or they get bullied for it. Oh, you've got to own it. Make it yours. You know, you can't hide in a crowd. So why bother trying? Let me see how tall you are compared to me. Stand up. Let's see. <laughs> Somehow I don't think that. Yeah. Oh, it kind of works. It kind of works. <laughs> Okay. This, this, this is just about long enough. <laughs> Ian, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.